at the idea. He's into communications. He's also a very great learner. He's always learning new ideas. He's always trying to see how to improve things. And he's always working about getting input to people about that if they ask him for it. So he's done lots of different things, including getting input on restructuring the values. And he's done a little thing that he doesn't like to do, so I'm not going to actually mention it. But I will tell you, you've seen it pretty much every day if you've been in YWAM for the last like, six years. <laughs> one of the most cross-cultural people I know. He is, I don't know how many, um, no, like he's I'm Armenian, I mean, I um, a little bit of his, he wants to share with us. And, and you have been very encouraged and challenged this week, just like uh, hearing about um, cross-culturally, how we can approach different students as individuals and more put them in a system and um, kind of make them adjust to the system and try to approach them where they are at and things like that. And, so, yeah, that's the introduction for me. <laughs> <laughs> the most important thing to the two of us, though, is that he's a friend of ours. So, I've known him since at least 2004, and he's always had a good So, Joseph? Got a bunch of people together in England, and I was a part of that. And we looked at 
how do we truly articulate? And we realize we don't have a value of communication. And the value of communication is important to us because it's the same thing that we uphold. We uphold knowing God and we live it. And communicating well should be something that we should also be intentional about. First of all, amongst each other, amongst us as staff, as multicultural people, in our communities. I know my wife and I, she's German, I'm Armenian Lebanese, so you can imagine the challenges we have. Uh, I am Mr. Passionate and screaming and running and jumping, and she's very rational German. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm angry, she knows every feature of my face changes. When she's angry, she's like, oh, I'm angry. That's all you know. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I mean, so we had to learn to, to, to meet each other halfway because you know the way the way we come into the community, we bring everything that we know from our cultures, from our families, and so on. And yet we have to redefine our our team. And we've done great. I mean, if you put a couple of hours together in, in the town and have them speak. You can have people that don't know why I'm sitting around and go, so what song language are you guys spoken, speaking, you know? Uh, because it sounds like, what is BTS? Who's Lauren? You know, well, who's Danny? You know, and we just get into lingo, even ourselves, that to the point that sometimes when we go out and we send our teams out, I'm working a lot with our teams on this whole aspect of how we articulate the gospel in this day, in this age, where information is pretty much um, pervasive. It's everywhere. So we've got to be very, very careful. So the the value that we kind of came up with, and I know the, the leadership in my mind ratifying, um, it took about two years, by the way. They kept on talking about it. I remember being at three uh, global leadership meetings, and at three of them they were talking about this, but they never decided until I think they decided that maybe now they've done enough communication and they should just decide. And it was funny because there are a number of people telling me, so I've heard there's a value coming. I'm like, yes, what is it? It's about communication. Can you tell me anything about it? No, not really. Why? Well, because we haven't finalized the exact terminology. So I don't know if you know this, but you know, it was sent to all the school leaders, all base leaders, all the different leaders in my mind, and it says, so the 18th value goes like this, communicate with integrity. Okay, now when we, when we think about the word integrity, what are we thinking? Of course, if you're English speaking, you know what that means. If you're not English speaking, you're going to integrity. Very interesting word. Remember that just because we know a word doesn't mean that we have the right context. You know, so for a, for a green person, integrity is a word. And you have to explain it. And they look up their dictionary and they look what that means in their language. If someone is Spanish speaking, they look at it up as well. And so you're going to, we, we throw out words, we throw out concepts, but we have not to, not to forget that we come from different backgrounds with different values and different perspectives. So that is it. So, so integrity means honesty and straightforward. Don't beat around the bush. Be straightforward. Be real. Don't communicate something you're not. And in my mind, we tend to sometimes flower things, right? I mean, come on. Oh, and we have millions of people going to the right now. Really? Like, you go around to count them? Or, no. So let's, let's, stick, let's stick to the numbers that we know. Let's stick to the reality of who we are. Let's not hide who we truly are and have to make up something. Because the world does that enough. And I think we're trying to flow against what the world does. So the integrity aspect is very, very high. So let's be with the numbers. Like, when people say, I have a small school, and I need to go, how many students do you have? And you're like, five, and then they're like, oh, oh. Like, what should you do? Should you say 10? Does that sound better? No, you say, I've got five wonderful students I'm going to be working with. And I'm so excited to do that. Rather than, yeah, I'm so sorry, you know, I have five students only. Because as, as if we're always going to go up on a trajectory and keep on going up and up and up, eventually we're going to have seven billion wildland staff around the world. You know, <laughs> you know we're, maybe one day that will happen. I will have, want to have the faith for that, but right now God's not speaking about that. God's speaking about communicating well and being great at what we do and who we are and who He is and articulating that. Then it starts, goes like this. That's the main title. Wildland affirms, affirms, we're very affirmative, uh, that everything exists because God communicates. God communicated to create the world, right? So he didn't have to say, let there be life. Yes. Let there be animals. Let there be Asians. Let there be Africans. Let there be, you know, and, and so on and so on. So he, he does communicate. God is a God who, from the beginning, has always communicated. So we agree that communication is very integral to everything, <coughs> right? And then it says, therefore, Wyoming is committed to truthful, accurate, timely, and relevant communication. Let's go through each of those, just for a, for a step. So it says, truthful. So, no beat around the book. Say it as it is. Don't hide it. Now, for polite cultures, that's very hard sometimes. You know, some, some cultures are polite. They don't go, oh, yeah, everything's wonderful. Are you having problems? No. 
Because in a culture, it's shameful to say that you're having issues, right? But it's like, yeah, we are, we are in a season of growth. You know, you can say it in a polite way without saying that, you know, we're having issues. Uh, because you know how it is in a in community, when we, when something happens, and the leadership is dealing with it, the, the community knows something, but there's no clarity. So it's sometimes best to get up and say that it is, and don't beat around the bush, so that everybody's on the same page, because if they're not, then gossip will rise, and people will take sometimes what they do not know, put fear to it, and all kinds of other things, and then who knows what you'll hear from a third person around the corner. And I've had people tell me, oh, I why am I now, you know, accepting gay staff? And I'm like, hello? Where did that come from? You know, and how can you get that much? And so it's fascinating how you'll say one thing that will eventually become something else, and become something else. This is one of the things that we talked in leadership, every day should do the art, public relations. So with the community that they're in, they should regularly be communicating what's going on, what we're doing, so that when the community goes to come to crisis, then the community knows because they trust us, because we've always been transparent. So truthfulness has to do with transparency. Mm -hmm. And transparency has to do with openness and brokenness, right? And if things are not well, why do we hide that? Yes. And why do we then, you know, suddenly, you know, keep on oversharing when we think they're going well, but never share much when we think they're not going well? We should be real, we should be truthful, we should be transparent. And then there's nothing that people can point to at us, but rather they see that we are truthful to the, to the best that we, that we can. The second one is accurate. So numbers, right? So this is another one where sometimes visionary leaders will like to kind of pull these numbers. And even us, you know, we say, oh, we've got thousands of bases. No, we've got a couple of hundred bases, okay guys? We don't have thousands of bases. But we're protecting that. That's something that I'm sure we would love to see more bases and more in more places. No question. But we are literally six, seven hundred bases max. And we don't even know because like one one day we know that a base starts, another place a base shuts down. Okay, it happens. And we, we won't know the full number, but we say around something. So the accuracy is important as well, especially in this age and time where, eight, where companies and agencies and governments and news agencies tend to very quickly flower things. And I think in a world where, where stock markets and everything is busy, they always want the bigger numbers. And so I believe accuracy is important. Uh, I think accurate information is important because, again, it, it, it reflects the integrity, it reflects the transparency, it reflects the truthfulness. And that's why they chose those words. Then we have the, the timely. Not, you know, we had an issue and it was 2007, and now it's 2012, I want to tell you about it. But rather, in 2007, communicate what's going on in 2007 and not wait a couple of years before you share that stuff. Um, I, don't know, I don't know how many websites we have that said last updated three years ago, four years ago. Um, and, and this is where newsletters. <laughs> This is where newsletters and information like this needs to be regular. It's important that we do timely communication at the right time, given the right time. Once we know what we want to say as well, not just <coughs> for the sake of speaking either. Okay? So I know a lot of people are like, we should say something. Let's say blah. And I'm like, people are more confused with blah than they are with hello. You know? So how about we first decide to say hello, and then we say hello, and then not a blah, because they go, so they, that was interesting blah. Did you, did you understand what they were saying? And so we have to be very careful that we do do timely, but we also know what we're communicating and how, how the information is. And then last but not least, relevant communication. So we need to speak a language they understand. And I, in my version, I put a little parenthesis in between, concise, especially in this Asian time, because we have many leaders that get up and keep on talking, and talking, and talking. And I think that we should be concise in our communication. I think we should be uh, succinct, we should communicate, get the point across, Especially in this age where there's so much information already. So saying it as clearly as possible in the short time, relevantly to the audience is great. In my BTS is what I teach in now, I always stop about half an hour to 45 minutes early. And my students, the students of the school love me, they go, you stop, you stop early. I said, well, it's not just stopping early, you're comparing me to a speaker that just kept on going. But did you get what I said? Yes. Did you understand my point? Yes. You know, so did I. So I decided to stop speaking. <laughs> but, you know, why should I go on just because I have the time? So give them the time to do some exercise or let them prepare for their outreach or whatever. And people were like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Like, because we shove our program, like I was telling the SPS, we take a week and we say we have to shove the content, the content into a week. 
So we go by, by time rather than by the amount of context we want to communicate. And so then if it's relevantly communicated and articulated, then stop, for God's sake, for everyone's sake. <laughs> you know? And so, you know, I'm always like, just, okay, finito. And learn as a, as, a, as a speaker, as a teacher, to be concise when you are concise. And I remember a couple of years ago at the UFN workshop, I went to Colorado Springs, it was 99. They asked me to present in a while ago. And they said, you have 25 minutes. I get there to the meeting that evening because everyone the days before had overdone their time. They said, you're going to shorten your time. I'm like, okay, how much do I have? They said, 12 minutes. I'm like, oh, okay, five minutes is fine. I'm doing something in 12 minutes. And they're like, yeah, but that's the translation. I'm like, wow, that's seven minutes. And I remember first I was like, uh, and God said, we can do this. <laughs> so I got up. I scrapped seven of my slides. I had like 10 slides. I scrapped seven of them. I think I stayed with like four slides. And then I basically got up and I went, blah, 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 thank you very much, and stopped on the 10th minute, 11th minute, basically, and I walked, walked off the stage. Everybody's like, this is a Middle Eastern guy, and he shut up so early. Like, you know, like, oh, this is impossible, you know? Doesn't he have some African background too? Like, you know, you know, he has to go on because he's African, and we go on night, you know? But I think conciseness in the West is important because we're very time oriented. We are, we, are, we are precious with our time, and I think we should be precious with people's time. And not write newsletters that are seven pages, by the way. Please stop that. You know, write, write something that's you know, short, concise, to the point, and have them rather dialogue with you, or find a way of communicating with them, be it by Skype, or chat, or by writing them personally in the longer letters if they're interested to know what you're going to do. How many emails do you get, how many newsletters do you get from our ones that are about three pages long, and you're going? La la, okay, I better not get a copy. You know, because it takes a lot of information and we can only handle so much information. Alright? So that, that aspect of it I think is important. And I think if we as and let me finish it because it's pretty the rest is quite huge. Um, the rest is basically we believe that communication is essential for stronger relationships, healthy families, communities, and effective ways. Duh. I mean, I would disagree. That's totally right, and I think we've known this for so long, and because we feel this mission to get to a place where we actually value this and make it a standard foundational value, because I think we've been living it, we've been doing it, some places we've done it excellently, we've learned through it, and we know that we need to sustain it more to the generations after us so that we can continue the work of God that He's called us to do. So this is my little penalty thing, and that's it from the side. So I want to do and uh, thank you so much for all of you guys. I know that uh, this is my first time in Honolulu. It's been, it's been very refreshing to be at another day and see what God's doing in other places because you don't have to go to You can get lost. Uh, so it's nice to be in a place where you don't get lost. You know what you need to have. Uh, okay, that's good. Bye-bye. All right, so thank you very much and uh, back to you. All right, guys.